Uh, it never ends that you think you've got something sorted out and uh, it comes back to bite you. I've noticed that the, well, the, uh, the, the throttle slide is sticking in the carburetor, having run the bike for a few miles now. And uh, I've noticed that it, it, well, it's just not shutting properly. I had it, I thought, sliding nicely, but uh, with the new hardened uh, or hard anodized throttle slide, but um, yeah, it's definitely sticking. And uh, it seems that the tightness of these clamps, or the, uh, the nuts holding the carb onto the head, affect the, the slide. So it's obviously distorting slightly as I do up the, the nuts. So that's disappointing. I'll uh, take the carb off anyway and uh, see if I can work out what's going on. I guess this face Either this face isn't flat, or the one on the head isn't flat, or maybe both. But um, and maybe the slide is just too tight. So I went to some lengths to get it smooth, uh, running smoothly. But um, obviously something needs to be done. So I'll take it off and check it out. Okay, so with the carb off the head, nothing else changed. Then it runs absolutely beautifully. So it's obviously distorting when it's clamped up and uh, quite possibly as the as it heats up. So yeah, I mean, that's as crisp as you like. So yeah, I don't know quite what's going on. I'll check out say, the flatness of this, the flatness of this, and uh, do that for a start. Okay, so putting a straight edge against this, this is a nice thick straight edge. I can definitely see daylight along the centre line here, so it's, it's bowed that way. Going this way, it looks pretty flat. But um, so this way, definitely bowed. And trying to fit a feeler gauge between the, uh, well, through the gap basically in the centre. It's 15,000 doesn't go, but 10,000 does. So it's something between 10 and 15,000 difference in flatness. So this is say 12,000 down relative to the, the outer edges. So it's not huge, but it's probably enough certainly to distort the, uh, the body of the carb as it's tightened up. Difficult to see quite how it would distort it. If you're applying pressure here, then what's going to happen? It's not going to bring this center part up. So if anything, I think it would do the opposite. But um, yeah, not sure, but certainly not flat. So I think I'm going to have to uh, rub this down somehow on a, on a glass plate or something similar just to bring these sides down to the level with the, the center line here. Hmm. No ends, does it? Yeah, checking out the head, it's, um, it's as flat as I can tell with this, just with this straight edge and the light behind it. So um, it looks as if the problem is just restricted to this flange on the carburetor. I'll maybe if I look online, see if I can see any uh, other people that have this problem and what they've done about it. But um, so my default, I guess, is to so just rub it down to get it flat. Obviously, that's going to make this uh, groove shallower for the O-ring. And uh, obviously, re remove material from the carburetor, which I'd rather not do. But um, that might be the way to do it. I'll try and use this machine table to measure the warp more accurately. I just get this uh, check out. Oops. There we go. Okay, so I think these two ears have come down, pulled in, bowed in this way, which means that it seems to rock, rock that way quite noticeably. But there's also a, a gap under the, under here, between the flat plate and the center so the ears are turned down 
I'll bring this down. Looking online, some people seem to just fly cut the whole face off, which seems a bit crude to me, and obviously it's going to make this flange thinner, which makes it even less rigid. Um, another alternative is to bend it back. I've seen people online doing that with a just putting a socket down here. Something stiff and round that's a good fit in this ball and pushing it down a press to take the to bend these back up in effect. I don't have a press, so uh, it might be tricky, but on the other hand, okay. this is pressed down now by the uh, the vertical slide on the this little milling machine. So it's hard down on the on the ears. Let's see if we can get a this is a ten thou feeler gauge and that and that fits through pretty easily. So let's try another one. Fifteen thou. Yeah, and that's that's snug. Might just fit. I can push it in, but um, yeah, so 15 thou, pretty much as I measured with the, just with the straight edge, seems to be about the, uh, the degree to which it's bent. So that's um, well, just over a quarter of a millimeter. So if it's a millet flat, I'll be taking at least a quarter of a mil off each of the, of the ears. Which might not be such a bad idea. Okay, so I've got a fly cutter in this mini mill. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to try and take off the minimum that I possibly can. Having this uh, vertical slide as low as possible will hopefully stiffen up the machine a bit. It's not the best in the world by any means. Okay, well that proves that it's warped. So it's just uh, touching up both sides and way off the middle. So yeah, so it proves the point. So I think I'm gonna try, what, three thou in the first instance? Okay, so that's three thou. Take another three thou. So that's six thou. And it's, it is actually cutting this face completely now to the O-ring slot. And same on this side as well, around this sector here. So it's not far off. Okay, well that's cut all the way across the face now. So I think I'm about done. Sure enough, it was um, 15 thou. So I think I'm safe to take it out the vice now. Okay, so not too bad. So this machine is far from accurate, but um, yeah, looks okay, I think. The uh, O ring groove is going to be slightly shallower now, certainly. On, the, on these either side where the ears are, um, less so here. Let me just skim that surface. But yeah, it's probably uh, what well, it was, just over 16 thou. So not too much thickness lost. I really don't like the idea of taking metal off, but um, needs must, I think, in this case. So I'll uh, put it through the cleaner, ultrasonic cleaner, blow it through, and uh, give it a try. Something that's become apparent as soon as I tried the O-ring in this slot is that the uh, it needs deburring. There's a burr on the outer edge and the inner edge, but this just running a screwdriver around seems to be doing the job. This inner edge here as well has got a slight burr on it. 
So, Carpresso back together, um, and the bottle slides beautifully, just as it did before. But I suppose the question is whether it's going to stay like that when it's clamped up. So I'll whip it back onto the head and hope for the best. Right, so it's all back together. The uh, the nuts are tightened up to the correct 10 foot-pound torque. Um, and uh, the slide feels absolutely free. You can hear that just clicking down on the uh, throttle stop. So the throttle is still marked up from off to full half quarter, three quarters. So I can... Uh, get a handle on the tuning, which I think is probably pretty close from uh, the experience so far, but uh, I'll check it out again now that the carburetor has been retweaked again. Right, that'll do for now. Thanks for watching.